Welcome back to New World Next Week. I'm James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. And I'm James Evan Pilato of MediaMonarchy.com. We told you about the Space Force a year ago. We got that story plus. We'll let you know which American state has the least amount of psychopaths. But first, the heavier stuff. Congress must act to stop U.S. involvement in the Yemen war. That's the headline from the CFR-controlled fake left gatekeeper magazine, The Nation. Eight million teeter on the brink of famine. America is complicit. That was the headline warning from the Washington Post, an editorial back from June 13th, as Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates launched a military assault on Hodeidah the major port city in Yemen, despite pleas from relief agencies and even the United Nations. The United States provided diplomatic cover and military intel for this catastrophic attack on the lifeline for nearly 80 percent of Yemen's food imports. The Trump administration's hand in this gruesome new chapter of the world's worst humanitarian crisis highlights the urgency for Congress to act. After all, this Saudi-led conflict in Yemen could not continue without unauthorized U.S. support. Sidebar, back in October 2016, U.S. News & World Report said Obama-Yemen attacks are unconstitutional and unwise. But continuing from the nation, congressional efforts to end this war may not only help avert a famine in the Arab world's poorest country, it could also fundamentally change how Washington works by drawing on the Constitution and partnering with conservatives to rein in decades-old presidential overreach. Progressive advocates for peace and restraint are laying the groundwork for a potential sea change in U.S. foreign policy. That's how the op-ed in the nation gets rolling, and I think in a lot of ways we see that sort of seeking to kind of control and direct kind of certain narratives. I'll also include some of the latest coverage from antiwar.com, since antiwar could use a little help these days, eh, James? Absolutely. And so I think there are three things to really note about this story. Number one is, yes, the Yemen war. What war? Yes, the Yemen war, the one that you don't ever hear about on the nightly news, whether mainstream or alternative. It's just not being covered, despite the fact that this really is one of the largest ongoing humanitarian disasters in the world right now, including the largest ever cholera outbreak in human history. Um, but, you know, minor footnote on page, you know, B-17 of the, the newspaper, because who cares? You know, it's just some backwoods corner of the world. Well, we care. It is an important issue. So, uh, yes, antiwar.com has uh, coverage of this and uh, the Scott Horton show. I'm sure people have listened to some of his interviews. One of the few people out there that's really talking about this on a consistent basis. So my hat's off to that and I will direct people there to, uh, for that. Secondarily, uh, yes, I mean, I think the obvious answer is yes, the the U.S. uh, government, the Congress, really could rein this in, really could stop this, because as this article points out, I think quite correctly, yes, uh, it would be impossible for the Saudis to really conduct this without U.S. support, overt and covert, uh, not only in terms of funding and supplying and arming and training and equipping the Saudi you know, Air Force, a bunch of pampered princes flying around, couldn't fly their way out of a wet paper bag if it wasn't for U.S. military coordination and and help. But also in terms of the now we now it's slightly being revealed there's covert action going on on the ground, uh, help from the U.S. Green Berets uh, that Trump has sent in there to help his uh, Saudi pals. So, yes, it could This really could be stopped if the U.S. Congress actually did stop this funding. And you might say, well, uh, that's never going to happen, James. Well, actually, it can and it does and it is happening, just not to the Saudis. It's happening to the Turks. Uh, You might have heard that uh, the uh, a sale of 100 of the flying jalopies, known as the F-35s, is being cancelled by Congress. The uh, Senate has just passed a bill to kill the sale of 100 of these um, ridiculous uh, F-35s to Turkey because... Drumroll, please. Because Turkey is planning to buy some Russian S-400 missile batteries. So that's the kind of politics that will stop an arms deal, but... Hey, the Saudis, our pals, the, the you know, the, the terror mask uh, funders uh, in chief, well, why not just give them a $110 billion arms sale, um, give, send them tanks and combat ships and missile defense systems and radar and communications technologies in this gigantic deal so that they can continue to more effectively create the worst humanitarian disaster on the face of the planet with 100% support of the Trump administration. All right, so that, I think, is extremely operative. The other part of this that I found interesting was the subhead of this article on the nation. By partnering with conservatives to rein in presidential overreach, 
progressive advocates for peace are laying the groundwork for a sea change in U.S. foreign policy. Oh, would that it were so. Would that it happened. <laughs> That's a strange formulation. If only it were to happen that progressives actually would decide, oh, you know what? Maybe it's a bad idea to give all this power to the imperial presidency and to worship at the state of the feder uh, the, the feet of the federal government and to give them all our power and energy and do whatever you like, Mr. Obama. You are the king. Until, oh, wait, you, you mean someone we don't like can actually use this power too? Oh, no, now we have to change everything. And it's the exact same thing on the other side of the aisle. Don't pretend it isn't. We must give Trump all the power. He's the decider. He can do anything until the next Democrat gets in power. And then it's like, oh, no, the federal government is bad again. Who would have thunk it? This nonsense has to stop. And I really sincerely do hope, wish pray that progressives will will start to rein in the imperial presidency as well as conservatives. I'm just not holding my breath for it, but hey, if it happens, that would be great. And it might prevent this ongoing humanitarian disaster from becoming even worse than it already is. Well, and one of the nice things, James, is you and I have both been doing our own respective work through three separate U.S. presidential administrations, and we've been able to very easily predict exactly kind of how that pendulum is going to keep kind of swinging back and forth and we'll see that power get handed to bush and then it gets handed off to obama and there's much hand and it just kind of continues to go on and on and again they quite literally hand off the nuclear football to each other our second story this week on the first day of summer for new world next week episode 344 it's june 21st 2018 our second story this week maybe follows up in some ways james on last week's uh, iq we go from IQ to psychopathy. Study confirms most psychopaths live in Washington, D.C. The study is called Psychopathy by State. It was conducted by Ryan Murphy. He surveyed samples from the lower 48 states and Washington, D.C. to find the prevalence of personality traits which correspond to psychopathy. The personality traits generally corresponding to psychopathy are low neuroticism, high extroversion, low agreeableness, and low conscientiousness. D.C. came in first by far. But as the study notes, that's not exactly maybe a fair comparison as it is a city or maybe more properly a district of criminals – as opposed to you know being compared to an entire state study finds that urban areas in general correspond to more psychopathic personality traits another interesting finding is that a higher concentration of lawyers predicts higher psychopathy prevalence so removing dc from the equation the top 5 states the most psychopathic states in america are number 1 connecticut number 2 california 3 new jersey and number 4 and 5 new york and then Wyoming, which is interesting given just sort of the wild differences in population there. But the least psychopathic states, and this is good news to me, James, as it is my home state's 155th birthday today, West Virginia is the least psychopathic state. Mm. Finally, we're on the top of a good list, followed by Vermont, Tennessee, North Carolina, and hey, the new state I live in, New Mexico. It should not be surprising that the main correlation was that the state with the lowest percentage of people living in urban areas also had the lowest concentration of psychopaths. But to be clear, the paper is not so much identifying where all the psychos live as much as identifying general population traits which correspond to psychopathy. We will include the link to the main research, Psychopathy by U.S. States, and a little bit of supplemental research on the big five personality traits. Now, James, you are offered up this story. I was not aware of it, but you were the one who actually caught the, the West Virginia angle, and you didn't know that it was West Virginia's birthday, so that's a nice little extra bit of synchronicity here. You know, oddly, I don't keep uh, West Virginia's birthday on my calendar, but uh, it's, it is an interesting little uh, uh, synchronicity, and this one is brought to you by a uh, Corbett Report user, I believe it's SC Pat. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but we'll include a link in the show notes anyway, uh, who in included this story in the comment section at CorbettReport.com. So thank you for doing that and uh, bringing it to our attention. 
And yes, uh, there are a lot of adjectives that I could use to describe James, James Evan Pilato. Psycho, psychopathic is not one of them. So uh, well, yeah, maybe West Virginia is doing doing something right. Um, but yeah, the the bigger the bigger story here, the bigger picture is in other news, water is wet. You know, oh my God, psychopaths congregate around D.C. Who would have thunk it? No, of course. And this is one of those things that is just. It, it, it's one of those things you can bring up with people and no one really disputes. Yeah, I mean, of course, politicians tend to be psychopathic and bloodthirsty criminals, but it's the not it, not my congressman phenomenon. Yeah, yeah, they're all bloodthirsty criminals. They're all crooks and liars. But actually, I live in a, di in a district with a really good congressman. Everyone seems to think that way. Um, so, uh, But of course, to a certain extent, it's just justifying your own um, traits. If you go out and vote for someone and they get into power, or even if they don't get into power, the person who got, got into power, well, he must be the better man and it must be a, a system that works somehow or other. That's what the general population, the normies, if you will, would say about this. So I think raising the, the, uh, the awareness of political psychopathy and its incredible importance in the grand scheme of things and how this creates not a democracy but a cacistocracy where it is the the most evil uh, amongst us who get promoted to these positions of power because they are the ones who congregate in these areas and seek those that trough of power uh, where if you're a a power hungry manipulative narcissistic psychopath where are you going to go you're going to go to places where you can get the most power where is that in our modern day and age Washington, D.C. So, again, this should not be surprising. Um, anyway, uh, th this study actually also has some other interesting uh, uh, characteristics, uh, breaking down psychopathy by um, profession. And uh, lawyers do not fare very well on this list. It's uh, I'm just looking through it now, so um, I would invite you to go and look at the PDF for yourself. But some interesting things here that will not be, I think, ultimately surprising to people who have typed psychopathy into the search bar of CorbettReport.com and seen the various things that I've done on the problem of political ponerology. James, rest assured, I tweeted this story out to all the West Virginia politicians and news outlets for the West Virginia 155th birthday. I really find the part interesting, too, is that it talks about less psychos in more rural areas. And so it's not just D.C. The study kind of talks about in bigger cities, they're able to sort of burn through friends, as maybe some people realize, hey, this guy's a psycho. I'm not going to hang out with him anymore. A city gives them just that many more sort of marks if you will. Our third and final story on this New World Next Week, episode 344, is three final stories. Three updates on stories we have covered in the not-too-distant past here on New World Next Week that I think are worth revisiting because they've had some interesting updates and developments. Update the first on a story we first covered back on September 25th, 2015. Volkswagen CEO resigns as company crashes into carbon emissions fraud. That was our cover story back then in September of 2015. Now, this week, head of Volkswagen's Audi arrested in Germany over diesel scandal. Volkswagen was holding crisis talks on Monday to find a stand-in boss for its Audi brand after German authorities arrested Audi CEO Rupert Stadler as part of a probe into emissions test cheating. Stadler's arrest throws Volkswagen into turmoil as it struggles to reform itself in the wake of cheating revelations, which emerged after regulators blew the whistle in September 2015 on the car maker's use of illegal software. So the newfangled kind of car companies, James, kind of seem to be literally bursting into flames. It'll be interesting to see if the old school car companies can kind of hold it together. Update the second, a story we first covered back on June 22nd, 2017, nearly exactly one year ago. CRISPR gene editing can cause hundreds of unintended mutations. This week, a serious new hurdle for CRISPR. Edited cells might cause cancer. Editing cells' genomes with CRISPR might increase the risk that altered cells intended to treat the disease will actually trigger cancer. Two new studies published warn a potential game changer for companies developing CRISPR-based therapies. In the studies published in Nature Medicine, scientists found that cells whose genomes are successfully edited by CRISPR, case 9, have the potential to seed tumors inside a patient that could make some CRISPR cells ticking time bombs. And finally... Everybody's so surprised and excited about the announcement of the new American Space Force this week. I guess, James, they weren't watching New World Next Week a year ago when we told you it was coming. July 6, 2017, U.S. to create Space Corps in radical Air Force overhaul. And 
to this week to much fanfare and lame me making Trump calls on Pentagon to create Space Force. The only change I can kind of notice, James, over the course of the year is that it went from Space Corps to Space Force. So, James, those three big updates on previous New World Next Week stories. Yes. Uh, well, what's in the name? Space Corps, Space Force amounts to the same thing, right? Well, that's an interesting story. It's like watching a nightmare unfolding in real time or watching a, a car crash happening in front of you. You see it coming, you know it's coming, you know exactly what's happening, but what are you going to do? It's just here it comes. So, yes, the militarization of space proceeds apace, and it's a pro subject that we've covered before. I'm sure we'll cover again in the future. Um, but hey, there might be some goodies that fall out of that uh, that particular bandwagon, right? I mean, there are some speculating that, well, the Space Force might be the way for the, uh, the, the U.S. government to start releasing some of these, you know, secret alien technologies that they have, or whatever it is, to, you know, to, as, a, as a conduit for bringing that out into the public. So that might trickle down to us peons, right? Yay! Uh, I'll believe it when I see it, and also anything that they do end up revealing to the public or giving to the public it generally tends to be outdated and controlled in some way. So, again, I'm not exactly holding my breath waiting for the mana from heaven, uh, a aka the, the U.S. military. Um, but also, uh, interesting little sidebar to this story, uh, Blacklisted News just published this, uh, DOC Space Policy Directive 3, National Space Traffic Management Policy. Which is talking about a, uh, I guess this is a presidential directive uh, signed off by Trump, um, talking about the creation of some sort of new policy for managing space traffic because it's getting crowded up there and everybody's launching satellites and stuff. So we're going to need better systems for control and coordination of all this space junk and all of this. So uh, it's talking also about the possibility of uh, a space. Uh, um, I can't remember the terms they're using, STM, space traffic management, and SSA, space situational awareness. But these types of technologies might be given to the public as well, bestowed upon the public by the grand U.S. government in the, much the same way that, hey, we have GPS on our cars and our phones and everything now because because of uh, the, uh, what was it, KAL Flight 007 back in the day and uh, getting shot down by the Russians. So the U.S. military decided to give GPS to the world, including the airline companies, and that's why you have GPS in your you know, your mobile device uh, today. So, hey, there again, there might be little trickles coming down from, from heaven because uh, the U.S. government is going in this way. But, of course, the, the real ramifications of... Uh, the militarization of space uh, are bone chilling to think about what that really means and are being gestured towards by people like Putin, who says, you know, given everything that the U.S. military does around the world, maybe they're, they're taking this, this, this initiative in space. Maybe that's not a good thing. Maybe that's not a good thing for the future. Well, I'll agree with uh, Vladdy on that one at any rate. I haven't heard. I, I'm anxious to see that blacklisted news article about the U.S. space traffic cops. As a kid from a small town, all I can see is this very self-important police out trying to direct traffic and generally making a bigger mess of things. Mm -hmm. James, I broadcast news, music, and memes Monday through Friday, 9 to 5 Pacific time at MediaMonarchy.com slash listen. I hope people will come check it out. All right. We'll leave it there for this week. Looking forward to next week, James. Uh, talk to you then. All right, buddy. Thanks.